I take it the boy's father has some influence in the city. It wasn't my idea to get involved in the case, I can assure you of that. The political clerk or the financial one? The latter. But in both senses, one of the Premier's most ardent supporters. Ah. Uh, how'd you get on? Well, I had a word with the harbour master, as you suggested. And? And a brisk wind from the northeast uh, until about midnight. And then it swung around to the northwest. Well, I can't believe it. The body was found here, close by the North Shore, the boat nearby. I also talked to a couple of ferry boat captains. Uh, the bay here is protected by this spit. So if he was found there, he must have fallen in there. Otherwise, the north wind would have blown the body away from the shore, not towards it. But he didn't drown. And he had been drinking. Oh. Enough to make him fall and bang his head on the side of the boat, say? No. He'd had two or three at the most. In my opinion, he was hit by a blunt instrument of some kind. Uh, you forget, Inspector. He wanted to be another Ted Francis, a champion. He grew up on the water. He'd been in boats all his life. Now, if he'd drunk half a bottle, he wouldn't have fallen in. Is that the voice of experience, Sergeant Strachan? <laughs> I never touch a drop, and especially not if I were going out on the lake. But I've seen plenty who do. You uh, row yourself? I won the police sculling competition two years running, didn't you, Strachan? Oh, I didn't know you were at the regatta, sir. I wasn't. I read it in your personal file. There seems to be no end to your accomplishments. I had no idea. Oh, just a hobby. <laughs> yes, and a very worthwhile one at that, eh? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Hold it steady, Albert. Why don't you leave it, Mr. Francis? I'll take care of it later. Let me give you a hand. I've already told you, Mr. Whatever your name is. Talbot. David Talbot. I'm busy. <laughs> If you're from the newspapers or want an autograph, you'll have to come back some other time. No, it's not that. It's about the boathouse. I understand you might be looking for someone to share. I might be, but it wouldn't come cheap. I didn't think for one minute that it would. I need a roommate who can pace me in my workouts. Know how to handle one of these? Yes, I'm a little rusty, I'm afraid. But I did win a couple of regattas back home in Winnipeg. What did you row? Prairie schooner? <laughs> Go on. Give him a trial. All right. Uh, never mind. I'll lend you a boat you can show us for yourself. Seven and a half minutes. Pretty good for an amateur. You were right. You are out of condition. But we'll soon fix that. We do five miles every morning. I'd make it 10 if I were you. It's even slower than Clark. But not as slow as you. I'll beat you, Francis, any time. So what happened last month? Clark deliberately fouled him, and you know it. Is that why you've dragged this one in? Well, so if he can swim a little better. <laughs> that isn't funny, Larson. Yes, another washed-up body in the shore, and this place will really have a bad name. Hey, go, Mr. Francis. Stay out of this, Albert. You too, Talbot. Uh, hello, Mr. Francis. You don't want to get hurt, old-timer. I'd steer clear if I were you. I'm afraid I don't know your friend. Should I? <laughs> My name is Cameron. I told you to get out of the way! Inspector Cameron, the provincial detective. How do you do, Inspector? Miles Porter. Ah, Mr. Porter? And this is Hank. Hank Larson. Mr. Larson? He was just showing Ted here a few boxing techniques. Oh, yeah. That's right, isn't it, Ted? Nothing to worry about, Inspector. Unless you care to arrest them for their appalling techniques. <laughs> it's the truth, sir. Uh, officer, nothing to worry about. Until the next time. I'll be seeing you, Francis. You too. Uh, uh, Talbot. David Talbot. Nice to meet you, Inspector. Uh, oh. Where'd you leave your things? At the yacht club? I'll come and give you a hand. Oh, you mean it's all right? I can't row in this weather. It's uh, impossible. What about equipment? I assume you've got a boat of your own. I seem to have broken up the party. In the nick of time, if <laughs> you ask me. That's uh, pity. <laughs> I've been an ardent admirer of Ted Francis ever since the... Island Regatta last year. <laughs> that would have been splendid to have had a few words with him. Oh, he's a nice enough fellow. Bit of a temper now and again, <laughs> but no real harm. Uh, certainly knows how to handle a skull. Oh, he's one of the best. Uh, in my opinion, the best. Yeah, I work for him, you know. Take care of his boats. Oh, is that one of his? Yep. Mm. Hey, would you give me a hand with that? Oh, the greatest pleasure. Okay. Detective is 
still around, but he should be with the old man. It'll take two minutes at the most. <coughs> This must cost a fortune. Ah, yes, they do. But there's money to be made, all right. <laughs> if you win. Even if you lose. What do you mean? Well, if you placed a bet on your opponents. You're not serious. Well, thousands change hands every race. Ah, I see. Thousands had no idea. Yeah, and if you're as good as Mr. Francis or Mr. Larson... Uh, I take your point. Well, not that there's anything dishonest in this. Certainly not as far as Mr. Francis is concerned. I mean, he wouldn't lose a race on purpose. Not like some make a picture. Larson? Mr. Francis is best for fun more than anything else. Uh -huh. But Larson is really serious. Hey, do you care for a drink? Oh, I have to nice. uh, Cup of tea? Mm. Girls? I don't remember reading about any girls in the newspapers. Uh, you wouldn't. We sort of hushed it up. Well, oh. <laughs> Yeah, a good name is <clears throat> rather to be chosen than great riches. Oh, Rob Adams. 22-1. Uh. <laughs> Mr. Francis didn't want to damage the girl's reputation. Mm. Besides, there was nothing they could tell the police. Mr. Clark was drunk. He fell to the boat, hit his head on a rock. That was that. Uh -huh. You were here when it happened, were you? High Park. I don't like to be around when they're entertaining. Ah. Who are the girls, do you know? Well, it's over and done with, unless... That's not why you're here, is it? <laughs> oh, no, I'm on holiday. <laughs> Asking questions is a habit. I'm just curious about how the other half lives. Uh, Mr. Francis' friends, you know. There's a Miss Elaine and a Miss Lucille. They live around here somewhere. Uh -huh. Elaine Moore and Lucille, uh, Lucille Mercer. They're around here all the time. Together, separately, along with dozens of others. Mm -hmm. Shameful, if you ask me. But then who am I to pass judgment? More tea. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah, Mr. Francis must be quite a chap. How long have you been with him? Oh, six months or so. Ah, thank you. But I've looked after racing boats for a fair time. I used to work at Harvard. Ah, there were some rowers there, I can tell you. Oh, when was that, Mr. Tom? Just after the Yellowstone campaign. Oh, you fought with the Americans against the Indians? Yeah, Second Cavalry, under Colonel Gibbon. Oh, great. Huh? Harvard, eh? About 15 years. Ah. What made you come up here? Well, Mr. Francis was looking for someone to look after his boats, and I couldn't pass up a chance like that. One day, he'll be champion of the world. I heard something. Kids, probably. Looking up for some souvenir. into showing me one of your boats. You're interested in sculling, are you? Oh, even more so after my chat with Mr. Thomas. He's quite an authority. Yeah, we're going to be working out later this afternoon. Do that, Keen. Come and watch. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, why don't you, uh, Constable? <laughs> Inspector, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Talbot. Sorry, Inspector. Uh, you should find it fascinating. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world. Tall, dark, and handsome. Just the type I like. No him well? Nope, never saw him before. You paid a month's rent in advance. Mm -hmm. You must be quite well off, then. Don't get any ideas, Elaine. It's my turn for the roommate. Lucille? Well, considering what you got up to with the late Mr. Clark. <sighs> Ready when you are, Ted. You two, uh, coming? We'll watch from the balcony. Later. We'll, uh, start with a three-mile sprint, I think. I know. Quite well built. <laughs> I'm 
good roll, Francis. Have you uh, got the watch ready? Francis ought to make good time today, unless something untoward happens. <laughs> well, I think you're going to enjoy this, Jock. I see your two friends have turned up. You see the one with them, the one in the plaid jacket? Uh-huh. Well, that's one of the bookmakers I told you about, Jock Harris. Oh, uh -huh. Pistol for practice? Oh, it's for the timing. Oh, There's a young lad waiting at the finish line with a stopwatch. Ah. Are you straight, gentlemen? Come forward! Are I scared? Are you ready? Rumble! <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you who. After him. We'll meet later as planned, 10 o'clock. Careful how you hold that thing. And don't hit the ball too hard. Someone may have tampered with it, and you may get a nasty dunking. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's that you've got? You should know. It is yours, isn't it? Well, I've got a spare mallet somewhere. If it's a game of croquet, you want For What I've got in mind, this will do fine. <laughs> no, it's not dead. Are you two completely insane? We've already got one policeman hanging around. Are you else is right? Keep this up and they'll be buzzing around like flies. You don't think this is over, Larson? Because it isn't. Well, if you're interested, I can think of one way to settle it. Any way you want. A race. Three miles. My house against yours. Winner takes both. Need some paint. But that's one way to get rid of you, I suppose. Aren't you forgetting something? Half of that house is mine. Then you'll own half of his when I win. Or half of nothing if you lose. Is it on or isn't it? Nine in the morning, the usual course. Be there. Now, what the hell did you want to do a thing like that for? You've seen the timings. I can beat him easily. The workouts don't mean a thing, and a race is a different man altogether. I can still beat him. I hope so, for both our sakes. Oh, I will, one way or another. Uh, I, uh, think you both should. Well, I, I already told you I have to disappear, just for an hour or so. The party's just starting. I won't be long. You better not be. I promise. If you're not really going to keep that appointment, I'm afraid I have to. You're crazy. Maybe. The son's going to be very disappointed if you leave right now. Oh, she'll have to wait her turn. Like that, is it? Uh-huh. In which case... What is it? The elixir of life. <laughs> yes, but what? Cocaine. 
Works miracles, believe me. Cocaine stimulates the mind. Body too, if you take my meaning. I think I do. Don't uh, tell anyone, but uh, that's why I always win. For every race, I uh, take an injection. You're underestimating yourself. Fine. Right. You'll see. You reach heights you never dreamed of. I didn't know you invited him. <laughs> I thought he was one of Larson's friends. I didn't invite him. Before you say a word, I want you to listen to a proposition. A proposition to your advantage. I'll give you 30 seconds. A pair of oars in your hand, you're the best in the world, and everyone knows it. That's why every time you hit the water, the town is buzzing with excitement, and tomorrow will be no exception. So, already there's people queuing up to make a wager. But there just isn't time to organize things properly. Agree to a postponement, and there will be, and that will do me some good. And you could also place a bet yourself. To win what? You just said yourself, I'm the best. You wouldn't take it. You're not that stupid. For the right odds, I would. You're serious. If I bet on myself, you'll accept it. Oh, you're friends, too. All right. You're on. Are uh, you leaving the party so soon, Mr. Talbot? I've got an important uh, rendezvous, but I'll get back here if I can. has agreed to the postponement. Officially, he's waiting for new racing blades. Apparently, his others uh, accidentally broke. <laughs> and now it's up to you. I'm just about giving you up. Sorry, Inspector, but it wasn't that easy to get away. I'll take your word for you. What do you mean, then? Uh, about the Clark autopsy, Inspector. Apart from the uh, alcohol, uh, did Dr. Chisholm find anything else, do you know? Out of the ordinary way. Francis is in the habit of taking cocaine. I wondered if Clark did too. Not a trace. How do you find that out? Francis just offered me some. But you refused, of course. Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't. You idiot. Well, I thought it might help. Uh, what's good for Sherlock Holmes could be good for me. This is not a time for one of your inane jokes, Striker. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, and yet, the day after tomorrow, Francis and Larson are having a race. And by the look of it, there's going to be some heavy betting. How heavy? Very. This isn't just a wager between friends. It's being properly organized. Uh-huh. Fellow by the name of uh, Harris. Yes, you know him? Thomas pointed him out to me. He was around when you were all broke. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if he was mixed up in the Clark killing somehow. Well, I know just who to ask. Willie? Willie. Well, anything you'd like me to do? For a start, you can stop calling me constable. Oh, I hope you approve, sir. I thought that added just the right time. And I shall want a detailed account of every cent you spend. Well, so far, it's just the clothes. Uh -huh. But I'll need a boat. For what? Well, I promise, Francis, it'll be delivered tomorrow. Uh, yes. <laughs> couldn't, you, couldn't you borrow one from the police rowing club? Well, I'd rather not, Inspector. Well, what I mean is, a man like Mr. Talbot wouldn't even use them for firewood. Mm. Well, I do think, for the sake of the case, it's important to rent a really good boat, don't you? Well... Uh, unless, of course, uh, you could persuade your friend, Inspector Regan, to let me borrow the one he uses. Regan's got a boat. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he managed it, but the club bought him a real beauty. <laughs> I think we could borrow that one, eh? <laughs> Twenty-five, thirty-one. Is that all the distance miles? That's wonderful. It's pathetic. You're not pushing me hard enough. You'll never beat Larson if you keep at it. I just need some decent competition. We'll do another two miles. This time, put some back into it. I don't think I've any back left. 
two miles. I think I've seen enough. Don't be fooled. I could beat this time in a bathtub. So could he. Look, I don't mean to be a bore, but I think you should get some practice in, too. You may be able to afford to lose the house, but I can't. Well, I don't intend to lose. Anyway, uh, we don't own the house anymore. We what? Well, not exactly, anyway. What are you talking about? I used it as collateral and a loan. But we've already wagered it. So I wagered it again. I couldn't resist the odds. 20 to 1. You bet on yourself to win? Every single cent. You're crazy. If you lose, we'll both go to jail. I've already told you. I have no intention of losing. Ah. <laughs> what is that stuff? Force liniment. A few more minutes of oh. this, and you'll be as good as new. Oh. Did you used to give Doug Clark this treatment? No, he wasn't interested in me. It was Elaine he had the eye for. Ah. You were both here the night he drowned, weren't you? Who told you that? Ted? He shouldn't have. <laughs> Two girls up here alone? You know what people are like. They might get the wrong idea. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't realize that you were entertained. No, it, it, it's all right, Albert. What do you want? Some other time. No, it, Albert, you're not interrupting anything. Well, what best, can I do for you? Your best boat has just been delivered. And I thought you might want to have a look at it before I... Uh, yes, thank you. I'll be right down. <laughs> I think we embarrassed the poor man half to death. So I, uh, I did like you told me. Um. Well, I mean, as you know, information like this doesn't come cheap, you know. No, Willie. Well, look, I'm not asking for much, just a little something to cover me You're expenses. You're still on the outside, Willie. That should more than compensate. It's people like you, they get the Scotch a bad name. Uh-huh, so? Well, it's big. It's the uh, biggest thing in town right now, and very hush-hush. It's, uh, lucky for you I was approached, you know. By whom? Well, I could have had a lion share the profit if I'd been interested. Which, of course, you weren't. <sighs> you know me like the back of your hand, don't you, Inspector? Indeed I do. Well, uh, well, Harris is doing a lot more than just taking bets. He's hiring everybody he knows to place bets with other bookies. He's betting everything he's got and a lot more besides. Uh, on whom? Larson to win. Larson, yeah? Yeah. You know, he's betting so hard. It must be fixed. Stop right where you are. It's you, Inspector. What are you doing here at this time of night? Do you think you numbskull? Put that light out. All right, you two. Don't move a muscle. It's all right, Albert. It's me. <laughs> and Inspector Cameron. <laughs> it uh, it oh. seems that <laughs> you and Mr. Talbot and I got the same idea at the same time. Ah, so you both were expecting someone to break in, too. Exactly. Well, if we stand here, we'll frighten them off. Better come up to my room. Oh. There might even be a drop of whiskey left, if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> uh, that thing loaded, huh? The rifle. Oh, it's been packed away since I left the army. It hasn't been used in years. Oh. Uh. Oops. A Springfield. Center fire, single shot. The souvenir, Yellowstone. Yeah. I thought it might come in useful to scare off any intruders. Yeah, let have a look. Yeah. Nice piece of work. Now, how in the world do you suppose that that got in there, eh? Yeah. I better put it away somewhere safe before there are any nasty accidents. Thank you, better. I kept it when I left the cavalry. I used to call it my old friend. But as I said, it hasn't been opened up in years. Can we just uh, help ourselves, eh? Yeah, make yourself at home, gentlemen. Uh, Thank you. Mm. Well, let him drink to forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Uh -huh. uh, Proverbs 31 4. Uh -huh. Your help, Mr. Talbot, your help, Inspector. Ah, uh, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Talbot? <laughs> Oh, another 
souvenir? Huh? Yes, my daughter gave it to me. It's, um, uh, Mirsham, isn't it? She was always kind of uh, artistic-minded. Didn't know you had a daughter, Albert. She's all that I have left. Mrs. Litterman, Mrs. Alvin Litterman. And how on earth did you know that? It's <laughs> I saw the name in an envelope the last time I was here. Ah, uh, you are a sharp one, sir. Can we help you? Doctor, it's to get a tablet. I'm afraid I can't, Inspector. I ache in just about every muscle. Yeah, all right, leave it. It'll be easy enough to find tomorrow. Well, aren't you going to arrest him, Inspector? Don't think else he's trespassing. Uh -huh. I think losing tomorrow's race will be sufficient punishment. Well, one thing's for certain. He won't be around here anymore tonight. All the same, I'd keep an eye open if I were you, Albert. You never know. Oh, I will, sir. You too, uh, Mr. Talbot. As you say, you never know. <laughs> I'm in drunk last night, Talbot. What time is it? Time you and Albert got my boat ready for the water. Well, everything seems to be all right, Mr. Talbot. Of course it is. Why shouldn't it be? I only had some intruders last night. That's why I slept here. Good for you. I've uh, just got to go upstairs for a minute. I'll uh, meet you outside. giving you up. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Really good. Think maybe I might set a record today. Straight, gentlemen! Are you ready? <laughs> Stop your damn fooling, will you? Why not? You almost like this at the start of a race? It's an old trick, Inspector. It unnerves the opposition. But something's wrong. Do you think we should... Are you ready, gentlemen? Right. Ready?
you've described, I would guess a cerebral hemorrhage of some sort, though he's a mite young for that. Yeah. Any chance it could have been induced by a drug? Apparently, he was in the habit of injecting himself with cocaine before a race. Cocaine? Yeah. It's conceivable, I suppose, but it'd have to be a massive dose. And if he took it regularly, I doubt he'd make that kind of mistake. Maybe it wasn't a mistake. I'll let you have my report the moment I complete a thorough examination. All right. You've got exactly one hour to pack your things and get out. You can tell Talbot, too, when he gets back. Why don't you tell me yourself? I want you and Thomas off my property. Now. Aren't you being a bit hasty, Mr. Lost? This is none of your business, Inspector. I'm afraid it's part of my business. All three of us were witnesses uh, to your breaking in downstairs last night. I don't know what you're talking about. Not to mention the fact that you left a man to drown. And there were 30 witnesses to that event. That was hardly my fault. I thought it was a trick. Come on, he was always fooling around, and he could swim anyway. Oh. If I'd stopped, the race would have been rowed again. Well, you didn't make yourself many friends today. And evicting these two will only make matters worse. You're wasting your time, Inspector. I don't scare that easily. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. You will remember to mention the breaking and entering, won't you? Well, that may buy you a little time, eh? Well, thank you, Inspector. I guess I'll have to be looking for a new situation. <laughs> Unless you'll be needing someone, Mr. Talbot. Well, I'm not, not sure, Albert. Um, I don't know what my plans are yet. I understand. What are you looking for, Inspector? I'm trying to find where Francis kept his cocaine. Cocaine? The stuff he used to inject himself with. Mr. Francis. I think you'll find it in here, Inspector. You did know all about this, didn't you, Mr. Thomas? Well, yes, but, well, uh, even though he's gone, I thought it was something best kept to myself. Who else knew? Thinking of it, quite a few. Larson? No. Well, who? Well, some of Larson's friends, perhaps. Uh, maybe that man, Harris. You don't think cocaine killed him? It's a possibility. No, no, it couldn't have been. Now, one time he took some, he acted a little crazy, but nothing like today. How long ago was that? At a party a few months back. You remember who was there? I'm getting old, Inspector. There were a lot of parties. Uh, Mr. Talbot, I heard you mention that you were going to Young Street. I wonder if I could beg a great favor of you. Uh, certainly, Inspector. Would you drop this off at Dr. Chisholm's surgery at the corner of Temperance and tell him I'll be there within two hours? Dr. Chisholm, yes, no trouble at all. Ah, uh, most grateful to you, Mr. Talbot. <laughs> you too, Mr. Thomas. Good afternoon, Sir Harris. Uh, my name is Cameron, Inspector Cameron. Mind if I join you? What would it matter if I did? Not remotely. Ah, nothing. How much do you win? It's no business of yours. You knew all along that Francis was going to lose. That's why you bet every cent you had. Don't be ridiculous. Why? <laughs> why the hell do you think? What made you so sure of the result? I must warn you, I'm investigating a murder. Murder? Yes, murder. Nothing about murder. It was Larson. He was, he'd been timing Francis for days and he was slow. He was positive. He could beat him hands down. Uh -huh. He threw his word for it. That's the truth. That's all I know. What about the cocaine? Cocaine? Well, Larson must have told you that Francis was in the habit of injecting himself with cocaine before a race. Cocaine? No. No, he didn't. Did it help? <laughs> well, obviously it didn't. Not this time, at any rate. Not at any time. Don't even think about it. And don't leave town. I may want to talk to you again. Hello. 
You said what? Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. What's up? Cameron's just been to see Harris. God, he's asking some very strange questions. I think we'd better make ourselves scarce. Forget the report. Just answer my question. The cocaine in this bottle was not responsible for Francis's death. Too weak. He's about to take the whole lot. That doesn't make any sense. Particularly when you consider the amount that was in his bloodstream. I don't follow you. At first, I couldn't figure it out myself. Luckily, there were a few drops left in the syringe. I analyzed that, too. And? Seven times stronger. The syringe must have been filled from another bottle. Ah, the murderer made a switch. And switched back once Francis had injected himself. <laughs> Just in case someone like me got a little curious, eh? You know who it was? I think so. And why Clark was killed, too. There's a connection. Hmm. Must all have to have a word with Elaine and Lucille. Oh? To strike her lady friend. somewhere, Larson? What do you want? You're under arrest for the murders of Ted Francis and Doug Clark. Clark? Why in the world would I want to kill Clark? And who the hell do you think you are, anyway? The police? <laughs> really? Well, I didn't kill Francis, either. I like winning races, but not that badly. Well, then why the suitcase? <laughs> because I know things look bad for me. So I'm getting out till Cameron finds out who really killed him. Well, you'll have to go through me first. Well, that should be easy. May have assaulted a policeman. I thought he was threatening you. One Sergeant Stryker. What are we going to do now? I think that decision is going to be made for us. You're saying Ted Francis didn't die by accident. Neither did Doug Clark. You mean they were murdered? No, Inspector, you've got it all wrong. To do that, you've got to have a reason, and there isn't one. Neither of them would have harmed a fly. Mm -mm. Not on purpose, anyway. Well, there was a girl. One girl that they were supposed that to... That was ages ago, and besides, we weren't there. We couldn't say for sure they did. Did what? She was always around, wouldn't leave them alone. And she got, well, you know how girls like that end up. She said Doug was the father. Was she? If he was, do you think we'd have anything to do with them? He was always telling me he wasn't. It could have been anyone. Ted knew at least five men she'd been with. That didn't stop her from doing the right thing. He gave her quite a lot of money, I believe. Hmm. Well, where's she is now? She died. Suicide. Don't leave everything you hear. Hmm. You remember what her name was? We never knew it in the first place, did we, Elaine? Yes, Inspector. I remember. Mr. Talbot. There 
very much so, I'm afraid. Well, then we'd better be getting out of here fast, Dad. Give me the gun. You wouldn't want to be found here with him, would you? Oh, <laughs> you don't understand, Albert. <laughs> I understand very well. After what they did to Mr. Francis, you had every right. But not everyone would see it that way, huh? Give me the gun. I'll help you back to the boathouse. that just by looking at you. I keep trying to explain to you, Albert. I didn't kill them. Yes, you did. Then you came here and realized what a terrible thing you had done and took your own life. It happens all the time. Knowing that you're guilty of a crime isn't an easy thing to live with. You are guilty, aren't you, Mr. Talbot? I saw you. I saw you with that girl. You know, better than the rest of them. Get into the boathouse. Now, now, don't be a fool. No one will believe I shot myself. Now, listen to me, Albert. My name's not Talbot. I don't care who you are or what you are. Get into the boathouse. It's Stryker. I'm a sergeant. It's time you suffered the way she did. Get into the boathouse. Put down the gun, Thomas. <laughs> Is of God. He that doeth evil hath not seen God. He can see half the lake from here. I have overthrown Tabani, and God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And ye were as a firebrand, but out of the burning. Here, keep him pinned down with us. Try to control his shooting. Where are you going? Inside. Without a gun? Just keep him busy. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. is mine, saith the Lord. Eh? It's over. Finished. Maybe you're right.
It was your responsibility to see this was returned, Sergeant Straker. I was going to, sir, uh, but there were some loose ends I had what to loose tie ends? up. What are you still doing in those clothes? Oh, well, that's easily explained, sir. You see, I, I was about to... To what? Well, I, allow me to introduce you to Miss Lucille Mercer, Inspector. We've met already. Oh. Well, the Inspector here is gathering evidence uh, for Thomas's trial. He's going to have to take my boat for a while, I'm you afraid. You needn't lie, Sergeant. As I came in, I couldn't help overhearing some of your conversations. Nice to see you again, Inspector. Uh, Lucille? I, I was going to explain to her, Inspector. I just didn't want it to come as too much of a shock. <laughs> Your dandy days are over, Strager. Out of those clothes, back into uniform, and back to work, eh? Mm -hmm. 